time, can we just say welcome in the house of God? And uh, you're on an old face, but a new face, a beautiful face. Praise God. Hallelujah. And um, for those who know that we have gone through a church split, and that's why the church is a little bit empty, but we know God is adding more people. Do you know when, when God sends new people? It simply means that, listen, nothing that we can do is to pull people to the church. The Bible says it's the Holy Spirit that draws people onto Him. And all we have to do is give Jesus the praise. When we lift the name of Jesus, He shall add to the church. Amen. Praise God. Say obstacles. Who likes it when you know that your obstacle becomes a opportunity? Do you know that your problem is God's way of finding a way some of you are finding yourself in situations and you say lord i don't know how you're going to get me out of this you know the first thing that i said to johan and the team around me i said to them you know when the devil strikes so hard i cannot wait to see how god is going to set me out of this how he's going to save me how he's going to turn things around amen now i have seen my problems becomes a habit for god to show up show off I'm gonna say it again my situation my obstacle God has a habit to show up and he's a habit to show off just to prove to people that the hand of God is upon your life amen tell somebody next to you I will be a testimony say there's a miracle in heaven being released right now and my name is on that miracle Now, some of you are finding yourselves in situations where you say, Lord, if you don't show up now, it's the end of my life. Some of you say, Lord, if you don't show up now, then people will laugh at me. Maybe even some of you are saying, people already laughed at me. They look down on me. They've spit it on me. They've casted me out. And you feel so left behind. And I like the scripture that says that the ones that wants to be first has to be last. Because God leaves the best for last. If you have not yet received your miracle, if you have not yet received your breakthrough, if you have not yet received your deliverance, I'm here to tell you this morning that God said He's leaving the best for last. And that your day will arrive, your season will arrive, and God shall show up in your life. Hmm. Say, I have to respond. Why does God respond to people that respond? It's simply because heaven is not quiet. I don't know, I just want to say this. When you heal somebody in the name of Jesus, it's God that does the work, right? But do you know heaven is quiet when you take a person out of a wheelchair? It is the body of Christ on this earth that shouts hallelujah and give God's praises. The angels are quiet because it's normal for the body of Christ to heal people. And heaven is quiet. Do you know this church was hit the hardest in its evangelism? It's because we were making not just a noise, we were populating heaven and plundering hell. Because every time a soul comes to Jesus, every time you pull somebody out of the kingdom of darkness and you present him to the light and his soul is saved, heaven starts to rejoice. So I want to tell you now that who's excited about our blanket drive? I don't know if you are excited, but I'm telling you that souls are going to be added to the kingdom of God. So you have seen the video and, and, and I want you to get excited about it because obstacles for somebody else creates an opportunity for you. You can now take money to heaven. You not can take your car to heaven. You cannot take your house to heaven. But there's a soul, an opportunity for you to say, Lord, win this person over. So if you come on the blanket drive with me, you have an obstacle that there's people that need food and a blanket. It's an obstacle for somebody. But say, I'm going to be the solution. Say, Lord, activate me. Place me in order for me to be a blessing. Lord, use me as an instrument to win a soul for the kingdom of God. Say an obstacle. 
becomes a solution. Because I have the opportunity. Amen. I want to take you to a scripture where a lady found herself in a very difficult situation. Women, you know that if you cannot bear children and you are married to a man, what will it do to him? Imagine, Nita, you were craving and you were longing and you, were, you, you, you had this desire to have another baby in your house. And you, and, and you said, Paul, listen, brother, you need to perform. You need to make sure that the Lord blesses us with another child. But you find yourself to be barren. No matter what you do, you go to the most expensive doctors and no matter what they say, no matter what they do, it's like nothing works. No medicine works. And you find yourself in a position where this woman finds herself. And I want to put on 1 Samuel, chapter number 1, verse 4 to 7. Listen to this. And whenever the time came for Elkanah to make an offering. Now this is Hannah's husband. She has this obstacle that she wants to bear a child. And her husband loves her so much. That whatever he comes and he, and he gives on to his wife, he always makes sure he gives a double. Because he has, this, he has this desire that Hannah shall bear and she shall be fruitful and she shall, she shall carry my child. And he has this desire and he has this, this blessing for Hannah. Listen to this. He would give a portion to uh, uh, Pinia, his wife, and all her sons and daughters. Now, in those days... They could have more than one wife. But listen to this. And, but to Hannah, his other wife, he would give a what? Why? Michael, imagine you had another wife. God forbid. I'm just saying. Mm. You see, the reality is, church, that's why God said, just have one wife. Because there will be trouble in the bedroom. You see, Elkanah knew. He wanted a child by Hannah. But Hannah had an obstacle. Even though she received a double portion. Because the Bible says, for he loved Hannah. Although the Lord has closed her womb. Next verse. And her rival was also provoked her severely to make her miserable. Because the Lord has closed her womb. You see, I'm going to say this to you. Sometimes you find yourself in an obstacle standing in front of you. And you want to blame the devil. You want to maybe blame yourself. You want to maybe blame somebody else. But that obstacle has been put in front of you by God. Here comes, imagine this Nita. Imagine you never served God the way that you did and your, and your womb was barren. God closed your womb up. And no matter what you try, but you never went to God. God will close your womb just to find a way that the man of God shall come to pray for you and that the man of God shall lay his hands on you. That the man of God shall come and say, in the name of Jesus, be fruitful. You see, certain obstacles is not always just from the devil. Verse number 7 says, So it was year by year when she went up to the house of what? You see, some of you have obstacles in your life and I'm here to tell you, never stop coming to the house of God until God answers your prayers. You see, some comes to God quickly and use Him as a spare wheel and say, Lord, you have to show up now. And you don't find that way of pushing through, fighting it through. Standing up in the morning to say, Lord, I will not leave the house of God until God answers my prayer. Because this lady, listen, Hannah came year after year. When she went up to the house of the Lord, that she provoked her. Say provoked. Which means that she forced herself. She provoked herself. Saying that, listen, I know that last year dog, that God did not open up my womb. But I shall not stop coming to the house of the Lord until... Say until. 
There are certain prayers that you've been praying. There are certain doors that you want open. There are certain opportunities you want God to create for you. There are certain things in your life that you know that you know that you can just hold on a little bit longer. That she provoked, therefore she wept and did not eat. This woman, for years, she's been suffering. Elkanah was her husband and he, he gave a double portion of everything that he had. Some of you read the scripture and say, but how can that be applicable to me? How can God show up? How can God even allow certain things to happen in my life? I have seen where God has blessed certain people and when their riches becomes more, their money becomes more than their God, God removes it. Because an obstacle is not always by the devil. God puts an obstacle. God has a way to humble people. Oh, come on. Tell yourself, God has a way to humble me. Say an obstacle can humble me. Imagine Hannah didn't go to the house of God, Nita. But she, did, she wept in front of God. She cried in front of God. Obstacles in our life can bring a double portions of blessings. Okay, first of all. What I read in scripture there is, Hannah received a double portion by who? Her husband. Why? Because of the obstacles she faced. Okay, let me, let me, let me elaborate a little bit more. There are certain people God will put into your life that will hear your name, that will see your face, and God shall cause them, because of the obstacle you face in your life, God shall activate people in your life to give you a double portion. You didn't ask for it, but because of the obstacle in your life, God shall release it. We have seen it in the past, Pastor Chris. People that leave this church, they will still strive to the church. They cannot sleep at night because the Spirit of God, you have to. And I will not leave you until you do. Mm. See, God has got a different way of an obstacle to deal with it. The Bible says, He shall prepare what? A table in front of your enemies. Now, I want to just say this to you. When the devil is being treated by God, God doesn't play with the devil. He has defeated the devil. The only thing is, is, can we find our identity in Christ? Can we cry in front of God? Can we be broken in front of God? You see, the most thing that many people want to do is, they want to stand prideful in front of God and say, Lord, I don't need you. I don't want you because I have enough money in the bank. I've got a great house. I've got a great wife. I've got great children. I don't need you in my life. You see, then all of a sudden, your marriage is attacked. Your business is attacked. Your employment is attacked. And your children is attacked. So that an obstacle can come to break you. We don't want to hear this. It's only the devil that steals, kills, and destroys. No, 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 no. God can bring an obstacle into your life as a Christian to stretch your faith, to advance you, to break you, so that when he puts you together, that you are being put together with a greater measure, that you can carry more, that God can advance your faith. The Bible says that he will take you from faith to faith. He shall take you from strength to strength. And he shall take you from glory to glory. I don't know if there are people here this morning that says, Lord, I know that I'm facing an obstacle. I know that I cannot do it without you, so give me the strength, Lord. I don't have the testimony yet, but let your glory come from heaven and let me be a testimony. Because by my testimony and by the blood of the Lamb, the devil is defeated. Oh, I'm getting excited. You know what? It's not because of the mic. It's not because of a platform. It's because I know who my God is. I know He's going to show up. Oh, come on, the devil is in trouble. You see, the Lord has closed Hannah's womb. It was no accident by nature. That's why no doctor can do anything for her. But it reflected the authority of God who is in control of everything. Do you know that sometimes God will blind your eyes? He will close your ears. He will harden your heart. Just so that an obstacle can be birthed. 
Some of us are so set in our ways. Say our ways. Say God says in His words. His ways is higher than our ways. Say sometimes an obstacle needs to be put in front of me so that I can get on top of my obstacle, that God can lift me up. I don't know if you hear me, church, this morning. Sometimes He will put an obstacle above an obstacle, above an obstacle, above an obstacle, so that He can create steps for you. Mm. You see this step here? This step sometimes is an obstacle. Some of you need certain obstacles so that God can take you higher. Okay, now maybe you're getting it. Mm. You don't want obstacles in your life. Pastor, I will not the devil with my eight laws as a belief. What do I have to do with the devil? I just want him to leave me alone, man. That's how we operate in the Christian family. You know, I'm so holy. God has forgiven me. And I have paid my tithes. I'm coming to church every Sunday. Why is the devil still attacking me, Lord? He has to put obstacles in front of you. That this month, a thousand rain is your problem. And the next month, 5,000 rain is your problem. And the next month, 10,000 rain is your problem. And the next month, 50,000 becomes a problem. Until God can give you an obstacle to an obstacle so you can become a millionaire. Until God can bless you. That you will be a blessing to the kingdom of God. Say, Lord, give me obstacles. Let me take an obstacle and become a person that sees the opportunity. You see, that's how Christians should operate. Do you know what Christians does? Many of us go and sit and look at this chair. I wonder who's going to take the first step of faith and say, Lord, I see the obstacle. Some of you even think that I don't belong on that stage. I don't belong. Listen, I don't deserve the blessing God has prepared. That's how we discuss the matter. But then there are those who say, Lord, you see that obst obstacle is my opportunity. You see that problem is my opportunity. You see that situation is my opportunity. Lord, I know that I know that I know that this nation needs an opportunity to be created. There are so many obstacles that we are facing. So still you are sitting here and you say, but why did Hannah had to suffer barrenness? He really... God, is it really so necessary that you had to allow her for years and years and years to go to your church and cry in front of you? What type of God are you? Come on, church. You've been coming to church. You've been praying. And every time you take an offering and you throw it into the basket and God knows that the devil waits outside. And then you get outside. You've just thrown your last money into the basket. And then you get home and then there's a sticker on, we're going to come and cut off your water. And you say, Yerra, what now? How is this possible? I've just paid my tithes, Lord. Mm. Yeah. Like Michael. Lord, thank you for blessing me with this contract. Now I have just paid my tithe. Monday morning you get an SMS. Michael, I've got two comebacks for you. You see, an obstacle becomes an opportunity. You see, the reality is, is that we need to face the truth. Can it be that God has caused it? Let us compare Hannah's problem to, to Jesus' teaching in John chapter number 9, verse 1 to 5. Listen to this. I want to use another story. See, many times people look, there are so many people that has left even this church asking, did Sydney and Joey sin? Did they fall short of the, of the grace now? What did they do that, that this has happened to this church? It was selfish, prideful acts, arrogance. It was an act of Lucifer. It was an act of the Antichrist, attacking my character and my anointing and, and what God has called me to do. Listen to me. That's of the devil. But that's past us now. I want to show you something. How even in the Bible, people ask, did they sin now? Listen to this. Put on John chapter number 9, verse 1 to 5. After this, there was a feast of the Jews, 
and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. Say Jesus. Now there in Jerusalem by the sheep gate, say the sheep gate of Pool, which is called in the Hebrew Bethesda, having five porches. Next verse. In, the, in these lay a great multitude of sick people. Say sick people. You know, a lot of people don't understand this. Sometimes God allows you to be sick for an opportunity to be birthed. Sometimes God uses a sickness in a person's life to bring a son or a daughter that doesn't serve God, to bring him to his knees and say, Lord, I have never called upon you. I've never knocked on heaven's door. But if you save my father, if you save my brother, if you save my mother, if you save my child, I shall serve you all the days of my life. You see, sometimes we don't understand God's ways. Listen to this. There was a multitude of sick people. They were blind and lame, paralyzed, waiting for the moving of the water. Now, what you need to understand with the, the, the bath of Bethesda, there was angels coming, healing angels coming, and they were uh, stirring the water. And then whosoever was supposed to be able to get into the bath, when they pass through the water, they shall get healed. I thank God today that we don't need the bath of Bethesda. We have the Holy Spirit. And we know through the stripes of Jesus Christ we are healed. Amen. So watch what happens. Verse number four. For an angel went down at a certain time into the pool and stirred up the water. Then whoever stepped in first after stirring of the water was made well. And whatever disease he had. Verse five. Now a certain man was there who had an infirmity, 38 years. Say 38 years. You've been having a problem for a month and you are weeping. This man was sitting at the gate for 38 years and he was blind. Mm. You see, let me ask you this. Many of us are trying to figure out what has gone wrong. We should just ask, what can I do to get out of it? There are certain things that has happened in your life that you cannot change. There are certain things in my life which are obstacles now. People that I've trusted that has backstabbed me. Even today, I heard by one of the people in this church where another person tries to invite him to another church. Trying to break what God is doing in this church. There are certain things that I cannot change. But I see that obstacle as an opportunity to say, Lord, I know that I know that this church you have opened. That this church, you will make it grow. That this church, you will make it prosper. That this church, you will use to make an impact. That this church, you will use to get people to follow Christ. That this church will be a church where people can be connected to. That this is a church where the source of the Holy Spirit is. That this is a church where the fire of the Holy Ghost is. That this is a church where blessings is. That this is a church, Lord, where you can use people to step and impact the world. I don't care how many times people say, but Sydney, you're such a small church. In your eyes we are, but in the eyes of God we are not. You see, in your eyes, we're going to stay in this small building. But in the eyes of God, we're going to take a land, we're going to rule, and we're going to build a mighty big church. And we're going to win souls for the kingdom of God. I will not let people's opinions dictate my future. I will not let the people... That is called by the devil to destroy a church. Who has ever, listen, the Bible says, never bear false witness. Those who are grieving the Holy Spirit, accusing me of grieving the Holy Spirit, stands behind the door. You cannot sit in this church. It's got nothing to do with my voice. 
It's got nothing to do with the microphone. It's got nothing to do with the speakers. It's not got, got nothing to do with this beautiful stage that we have. It's got nothing to do with my nice suit that I have on. It's got nothing to do with my new hairstyle. It's got nothing to do with my smile. It's got nothing to do with who I am. It's all got to do with who Jesus is in my life. It's got all to do with the relationship that I carry. It's got all to do with the relationship that God has with me. It's got all to do with what the plan of God is through my life. I don't care what obstacles comes in front of me. And I'm here to declare over your life that God God has a plan for your life that God wants to use you you on he wants to use you brother he wants to use you he wants to use you and he's gonna do it no matter what people say when God's people are without hope or without resources when the Lord loves to stretch forth his hand from heaven to help in a supernatural way say supernatural way my God doesn't operate in the natural he operates in the supernatural. In fact, God gives us sometimes barrenness in order for Him to show us when He brings it on. Mm. When He steps out, who steps out? When He steps in, the devil has to step out. He would in turn lead us to a solution we could never ever think of. There's a greater answer you need this morning. And He can give you that answer that, that goes beyond your vision. That goes beyond your dream. He can activate you in such a way this morning that your family will be shocked. Do you know how many people have told me these words? Your mom is your dood geleed. Do you know how many times I've heard those words? I had teachers in my life saying to me that you will, you will not be successful in this world. They told me this, you will not even be able one day to broom the streets of this nation. I thank God they prophesied over my life because I haven't been called to broom the streets of this nation. I've been called to walk in the streets of this nation and preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. And for that, I will not be ashamed. You see, the devil has a way of amplifying what we are missing. He has a way of amplifying what we don't have. He has a way of making us sensible and sensitive about what we cannot accomplish and how we have failed and our disappointments. But I'm here to tell you, are you busy dying of an incurable disease this morning? I'm telling you that incurable disease is an obstacle, but there's a solution. Jesus is the solution. His healing power can come upon you. Are you about to lose your marriage? I want to tell you, invite God into your marriage and He shall save your marriage this morning. Are you about to lose everything in your life? Invite God into your business. Invite God into your family. Invite God into your relationship with whoever you are having a battle with. Say it out loud with me. My breakthrough is here. Come on. Say my door is opening this morning. Say my opportunity is knocking on the door. Come on. I want you to stand to your feet. Say my story is about to change. Say my obstacles are about the opportunities for God. Mm. Oh, there's something about to happen in your life this morning. Say, all I need is God to release a word from heaven. You need to declare this over your lives. Say, I'm the biggest prophet of my own life. Say, if God said it, I believe it. That settles it. Say, no devil, no stronghold, no witchcraft, no curse, no demon. Mies my school money. I'm just saying <laughs> oh. say those who plot against me may the Holy Spirit smack the hell out of them with my testimonies say my story is about to change come on declare it church say my story is about to change in the mighty name of Jesus do you believe that? give Jesus a praise church come on Praise Him, praise Him, praise Him. Mm. 
Just have your seat. Just have your seat. Now, tell somebody next to you, today is not a normal day. Because God showed up in my life. And everything becomes supernatural. Say, because my obstacles becomes God's opportunities. Say, sometimes God will create an opportunity. He will give me an obstacle just to prove that He's with me. Say, every voice speaking against me. Say, Lord, when I sit at the feet of Jesus, don't let my prayer go past you. Say, hear my prayers this morning. Do you believe God is going to answer your prayers? Yes. All right. I want to take you back to the story of Hannah. And then we are finished. Because then God's going to show up and he's going to do the work. Amen. Put on 1 Samuel chapter number 1 verse 8. Then Alkana, her husband, said to her, Hannah, why do you weep? Why do you not eat? And why is your heart grieved? Am I not better to you than ten sons? You see, he has a wife and there were sons. And he gives them a portion. But to Hannah, because she didn't have sons. And she didn't eat and she grieved. It was an obstacle where God used that he, he caused her husband to give her double the portion of everything and offering. Women, you like to shop. Amen? So imagine... God allows your obstacles so that your husband knows that you are a, a, a lady with a lot of obstacles. You, you, you don't know what to choose. You, you've got a, a, an obstacle in your life that you can't choose what color you like. So when, when God sends you to the shops, he, he will give you enough money to buy two different colors. Okay, maybe some of your women will catch it later. See, God can use an obstacle to give you a double portion. Mm. So he says, Hannah, am I not better than ten sons? Verse number nine. So Hannah arose after they had finished eating and drinking in Silo. Now Eli, the priest, was sitting on the seat by the doorpost of the tabernacle of the Lord. And she was in bitterness of soul. And prayed to the Lord and wept in anguish. Next verse. Then she made a vow and said, say a vow. This morning you must take your obstacles and say, Lord, this obstacle, I'm making a vow unto you. Find your obstacle, find your situation, find your storm. Find a way to make a vow unto God. A vow is like a promise. A vow is like a contract. A vow is a covenant with God. Go in covenant with God this morning. And he says this. Then she made a vow and said, O Lord of hosts, if you will indeed look on the affliction of your maidservant. Say if you will look indeed on my obstacles this morning. And remember me. And not forget your maidservant. But will give your maidservant a male child. Then I will give him to the Lord all the days of his life. And no razor shall come upon his head. Some of you need to move into a realm of a covenant with God. Maybe you need to say, my obstacle is an opportunity for me to give a vow unto God. To say, Lord, I will promise you A, B, and C. Are there such people this morning? Now I want you to stand to your feet. Stand to your feet. Say with me, Heavenly Father, I pray this morning. Let Hannah's life teach me that you can use human weaknesses to accomplish great things. Hannah's son grew up to be a great prophet in this nation. Let, let it not be hindered let, let my obstacle not cause me to stumble and fail. But let my obstacle cause me to stumble and to go to higher heights. Let my obstacles become opportunities. Let my problem this morning become a testimony. Lord, I will testify of the goodness of the Lord in and through my life. In the name of Jesus Christ. Say, Lord, help me this morning. 
not to be disheartened by my incapacity, but I shall trust in you, Lord, so that your name shall be glorified through my helpless situation. Say my situation is helpless, but when you step into it, you shall help it. You are my source. You are my God. You are my healer. You are my rock. You are my salvation. You are the Alpha. You are the Omega. Say, I shall lack nothing in my life. I know that I know that the Lord my God shall supply all my need. That He shall heal me. He shall restore me. He shall deliver me. If you believe that church, can you give Jesus a praise? Come on, praise Him. Give Him the glory. Praise Him as if He gives you your breakthrough. Praise Him as if He gives you your healing. Praise Him as He restores your life. I want you to stretch your hands to social media. Are there any prayer requests? Father, we pray right now that if we pray for the social media online church every person connected to this online church even those connecting after this lord i pray that your anointing will come upon them that they will testify of your goodness i pray that every obstacle in their life every storm in their life every situation shall turn around to be an opportunity that heaven shall be knocked on and that heaven shall respond that angels shall be commanded to go forth that god shall release an opportunity with a blessing upon a blessing upon a blessing in the mighty name of jesus Jesus Christ. Pff, hallelujah. Come on, church, believe it right now. Hallelujah. Thank you for watching. Hallelujah. Great to have you with us. Let me get the worship team up quickly. Remember to stay connected on all social media platforms. Go and check out our website www.identitychurch.cosa to partner with this ministry and together we can be the change.